In a recent call with a few of my colleagues, I learned how to set up a free radius server for testing purposes. Pun intended, because the server that we'll actually be installing is called free radius. Let's dig in. All right, folks. So in my environment here, I have this one device here, which is really an Ubuntu server running 24.04 the desktop variant so that I have a GUI interface to interact with. And essentially we'll be installing a service that will allow this to function as a free radius server. Now this will be the first in a series of videos where I'll be using this server uh, for testing purposes, as I mentioned, to authenticate clients attempting to access the network, whether that's using .1x or if I just wanna do a quick test to verify that radius is working in my environment. If you're not familiar with how to add Ubuntu to your EVNG environment, I put together a video a while ago showing exactly how to add custom devices to your EVNG environment. So take that a look and that will get you to where we're starting out. With that being said, I'll go ahead and start this appliance and we can get started. So while that's booting up, there's one thing that we're gonna to need to add to this network environment in order for this installation to be successful and that's internet access. So I'll click right, I'll right click the background and select network so that I can add a network node. And the type of this node it will be uh, management cloud zero. That's gonna connect it up to my local network so that I can get internet access. I'll click save. All right, so this device should be booted up. Yep, so I'll go ahead and log in. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is from the top right-hand corner is I'm gonna wanna click that and click this gear icon so that I can access the settings. Right now I'm under my network settings, so I'm gonna click the gear icon once more and I wanna go ahead and give this a manual IP address. Now, technically, if you already have a DHCP server on your network, it may pull an IP address from that DHCP server automatically. Um, but in my case, I know that I don't have one, so I'll manually configure that address. I'll give the address 192.168.0.113. It's a slash 24 network, so I'll type 255.255.255.0 for the subnet mask, and I'll go ahead and specify the gateway. All right, the next thing that I'll do is specify the DNS server. I'll be using Google. It's well-known address of 8.8.8.8. .8 .8. And I'll go ahead and click apply. You can notice that this is switched to connected, so sweet. And now I'll go ahead and pull up a terminal so that we can install that free radius server. All right, so if I hit show apps in the bottom left-hand corner and I type terminal and hit enter, that'll go ahead and learn, drop me into the shell. So real quick, if you want to verify that your network settings are working properly, I'll do a ping to the IP address of that DNS server 8.8.8. .8 so ping internet reachability is working just fine. And then I'll also verify that DNS is working. So I'll do a ping to the host name of www.google.com. And here I can see I'm getting responses back from Google. So awesome. Now we're good to go ahead and run the first command, which would be a sudo apt get update. Give that a moment to run and Boom, we're good to go. If you're doing this for the first time, that output may look a little longer. The second command that I'll do to, so that we can uh, go ahead and apply that update is a sudo apt get upgrade. And I'll hit, and I'll, I'll even do a dash Y because it's gonna prompt you to say yes. Um, but if you do a dash Y, it'll automatically select yes. I'll exit out of this and I'll hit enter. And now we wait. All right, so after what feels like a lifetime of waiting on this to install or apply, <laughs> it's, it's only been about uh, three minutes or so. The next thing that we'll do is we'll run the command sudo apt-get install free radius. And I'll hit enter and I'll click yes. Awesome. So that last command just installed the free radius server on this Ubuntu server. Now we're set up. It's installed. It's ready to go on the server, but there's two files that we'll need to edit in order to set up a test user and then verify that it's working. So the first file that we'll edit is the users file. And this is what we'll use to create a test user and password. And the second file is the client's file, clients.conf to be exactly. And that'll be used to specify the pre-shared secret that network devices will use when they're communicating with this radius server to authenticate network clients. More, more so forward authentication request for network clients to this radius server. So I'll do a sudo dash I so that I don't have to keep typing in my sudo password. And I'll go ahead and do a change directory, etc slash free radius slash 3.0 or dot zero to be exact. And I'll hit enter. And if I do it LS, I can see the files that are available. The first one that I'll be editing is this users folder. So I'll go ahead and do a sudo nano users and boom. Now feel free to read through this document at your own leisure. In this example, I'm gonna to skip to the exact step, the exact point within this document where we'll need to make a change in order to add a username and password. So I've scrolled down to the point in this file under uh, this user called Bob. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep 
Bob's information in place so that I can use that as a reference, but I'll copy it. I'll left click or right click and copy and I'll paste it right here. So right underneath Bob, I'll paste this in and now I can reconfigure this with my desired values and I'll uncomment it out so that it becomes active. So I'll call this user test underscore user. And this is case sensitive. So exactly how you specify it here is how the client will need to type it in in order for a successful authentication. And here for the clear text password, I'm gonna specify lowercase Juniper. And we're gonna spice this, this reply message up a bit just to know that we created it and it's, it's working as intended. So I'll say, hello user. It's gonna use the username value. You've been successfully authenticated via radius server. Awesome. So feel free to play around with that reply message as much as you want. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll go to go ahead and do a control O in order to save this file. And I'll hit enter and I'll hit control X to close that. And the next file that I'll be editing under this directory is the clients.conf. Really? I, you know, there's nothing that we need to edit to run the test that we're about to do, but I'll just show you exactly where we can identify the pre-shared key that it's going to use to validate this user that we configured against itself. And then I'm also going to show you how we go ahead and create a group so that I can allow uh, devices coming from a specific network to be able to use this radius server to forward authentication requests. So if I do a sudo nano clients.conf and hit enter, Again, I'm going to scroll down. This top part is where it's going to configure the local uh, information. Right here, we can see that the secret that we'll need to specify uh, shortly is going to be testing one, two, three. But if I scroll all the way down to the IPv4 configuration, all right, so right under client private network two, I'm going to create another private uh, group and I'll paste it in here and I'll go ahead and uncomment this out. And boom, I'm just gonna call this client network three, following the example. And I'll say users in my environment, they'll be coming from 10.0.2.0 slash 24. I want them to uh, use the secret testing one, two, three, dash three in order to be able to use this radius server. And that is literally it. So I'll go ahead and control O to save and I'll click enter. Nice, I'll do a control X to go ahead and exit out of that file. And from here, it's recommended that anytime you make a change on this radius server, that you restart the radi free radius service. So I'll do just that. I'll run the command system CTL, stop free radius. I'll hit enter and I'll do hit the up arrow to check the status. And I can see that it is currently showing as dead, <laughs> inactive. All right, so good. So I'll now go ahead and hit the up arrow on that stop command and I'll replace that with start. So now if I check the status once more by hitting the up arrow, I can see it's back up and running. So sweet. So now that we've restarted the radio servers and made the desired changes, configuring our user for authentication, now we can simply run this command that's going to allow us to verify if this radio server can authenticate that user against itself. And that command is rad test. We'll specify the username, which is test underscore user. Again, this is case sensitive. The clear text password was Juniper all lowercase and I'll specify local host so that it knows to run this test against itself. I'll type zero and then I'll specify what the pre-shared key is. As we saw earlier, it's testing one, two, three, the one that it'll use uh, for itself. So now I'll go ahead and hit enter and voila, we can see that it used exactly the credentials that we specified, uh, the username of test user and the user, uh, password of Juniper. And here we can see down at the bottom here, we received that custom reply message of hello, you've been successfully authenticated via the radio server. And that's it. All right, folks. Well, that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned for future network tutorials. As always, thanks for viewing and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.